how can you get an electric car for under ten thousand dollars well i always had an answer for that and i'm going to repeat it one more time in just one second but it looks like nissan had really stolen my idea today and uh, came up with a great uh, way to do that. Uh, they're just starting in Japan, but still very exciting because I'm assuming it's going to spread around the world. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, then uh, Tesla had another cool, uh, relatively big order for their semi truck. And then also Tesla is unveiling another uh, a navigation system, not another, basically new generation. I'm really excited about it. I don't like the current one, to be honest with you. And then uh, uh, Mercedes, -Benz, uh, Mercedes Benz and Biati had another baby. So we're going to attend that baby shower in just one second. And we're going to talk about it Ill at all. Plus, a comment of the day is about that BMW i3. So uh, let's get going. All right, so, so much to talk about, so let's get going. Of course, we're gonna start uh, with uh, this car, which is a Nissan Leaf, the previous generation. I, I bet you guys are wondering, why am I talking about it? I never liked the way it looked, I never liked the small range. But nevertheless, now that the new generation uh, uh, is, is being sold, um, you can buy a used one uh, like this for very cheap, like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Uh, of course, the battery is gonna be complete crap, and it's really gonna be unusable, probably gonna have 30 or 40 miles, really, uh, a total left on that battery but my old advice has always been hey buy that used uh nissan leaf and then get, get a brand new battery from nissan now that would have gotten you still probably under ten thousand uh dollars but Today, Nissan announced, and they're going to start in Japan, just like I said, I'm hoping it's going to come here to the United States and Europe and everywhere in the world, but they're actually going to cater to this idea that I had originally, and they're going to uh, have this exchange program uh, for a fee uh, where you can uh, bring your old, crappy, uh, used up uh, battery from the Nissan Leaf, and they're going to sell you one, a 24 kilowatt hour one, for just $2,850. Uh, American dollars. Now, if you can find one that uh, an owner does no longer want because it doesn't go very far for like $4,000 on Craigslist, and then you get this uh, a battery put in there, well, you're under $7,000. Now, just like I said, you can still do it right now. Uh, they will sell you a brand new battery, and it will be a little bit more here in the United States and in Europe, but I'm glad they're rolling out uh, this uh, um, this program in Japan. So that's very exciting. This is how people can get, you know, by the way, you understand that basically the biggest most important part of the electric car is the battery so if, you, if you're getting a brand new battery now this one's reconditioned which is by the way another great idea taking older batteries reconditioning it and you know basically creating them pretty much as brand new it's a whole another industry whole another business that i believe is going to be growing um and then i believe nissan is taking the older uh, uh batteries and creating like sources for the street lights and so forth there's so many applications for this um but this is something that people can get themselves pretty much a brand new nissan leaf right because the battery is brand new and then and the you know motor hasn't really been worn out usually that much because you know it's a electric motor um uh chris says i can see tesla uh, doing this in about five years upgrade your 60 to 90 kilowatt hour chris i agree with you except for what if they upgrade your 60 that's degraded to another 60 that's just brand new i would love that and i think that would be a great idea i think uh at some point this would be a thing though of course my number one prior uh, preference would be a swappable battery that you can lease of course um, all right, so let's, oh, by the way, before we move on to the next story, I should mention that this show and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla, and we have a discount code that they gave us specifically for this community in the description of this video. All right, um, let's see, uh, just kind of catching up. I guess I would buy a Leaf if I wanted to be sad, but I love being happy, I really do, says Derek. Well, listen, I, you know, not everybody can afford a Tesla, and this is a way for a person to get into an electric car that's slightly used, but with a battery on a budget. You know, a lot of people just, you know, don't have large budgets. Um, um, I consider myself very lucky that I can afford a Tesla, so, um, uh, so that uh, DRK says, while wow, look another revenue stream for traditional car makers. Well, yes, but if they're becoming untraditional, uh, unorthodox car makers uh, making batteries and recycling them and reconditioning them, shouldn't we be all for it? I think so. Um, all right, so here's another exciting news. I almost made it this number one story because I was really excited, as you know. I do not like the navigation system uh, in my Tesla. Uh, I mean, it's okay, it uses Google Maps, right? But uh, a lot of times I use it, and by the way, yes, I am wearing my pink watch twice in a row. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I don't like it because a lot of times I use my navigation system to uh, get to my destination that I already know how to get there, but I usually use it to see, well, how much time is left on my trip. And a lot of times, navigate the Tesla's navigation is incorrect. As a matter of fact, it's actually incorrect in the wrong direction where I get there later. So a lot of times I have to whip out my phone, get Google Maps on there with their traffic, and that traffic is pretty uh, uh, pretty precise. So I'm able to figure out what uh, when I'm going to arrive there. So Elon Musk promised a, a big overhaul back in January, and it looks like uh, he's tweeting today. Um, this is his tweet, and it looks like they're going to start rolling this out at the end of this week. And I'm I'm really excited because from what I understand right now, they're using Garmin navigation and Google Maps and uh, traffic, I believe. They're going to be switching to their own Tesla maps, if you will, that they've been testing. Uh, and he says it's still going to be kind of like mature beta, but still, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure they can improve it very quickly. Um, now, of course, this concerns me because, again, I've said it many times, it looks like Tesla is going Apple's route where they're doing everything themselves. Um, that can get us in a little bit of trouble, I think. But nevertheless, if they can integrate all of their uh, sort of... Um, micro mapping and their maps and their navigation system and their autopilot all in one system and that's what they're doing i think it will actually benefit us so i'm looking forward to not just new maps i guess you can you know zoom in and much tighter which is okay i don't you know I, that's that's good but i'm more excited about the navigation uh, uh destination times um and traffic because a lot of people really really want ways implemented into that so they're saying that this update will actually uh be very comparable to that um so uh yes the newest version should have uh, a thermal uh, management system uh, say aaron about the previous story about nissan leaf that is correct so the batteries will not degradate uh on that one as much uh but this one we're talking about the old one anyway back to my story about the elon's tweet this one i actually like i didn't like elon's tweets over the weekend i like this tweet so i'm excited about getting the navigation um uh, by navigation. Yes, Jan says correctly, Ways uh, Washington uh, bought by Google some year ago. Um, and <laughs> Chris says Tesla should buy uh, Ways. Uh, or, see, it looks like they're just liking making things in house rather than buying and partnering, um, you know, kind of moving forward. By the way, guys, if you like uh, this uh, show and this channel, please give this video a thumbs up. Always makes it do well after I repost it. And let's move on to another story. This is another Tesla story. So, as you know, a lot of, a lot of people and companies are kind of jumping on board and getting a sort of a test a fleet of these Tesla semi trucks. Well, FedEx is finally jumping on board with an order of 25 of those. I'm kind of surprised that they're a little bit late to the game because uh, uh, a UPS ordered, what, 100 of them or so? Uh, oh, 125? Um, a while ago, pretty much right after unveiling. So FedEx is jumping on board. So that's exciting. Um, DHL, many others, I'm expecting them to uh, follow soon with more orders. Um, let's see. Um, uh, physics is uh, talking about the uh, navigation upgrade. Uh, he says they're moving away from everyone and doing everything themselves is to have no dependency on anyone else. Imagine Google Maps has an issue. Tesla can fix it. I get it. Yeah, no, I understand. There's a big, big, big benefit uh, for, for, you know, for it, just like Apple, you know, you know, Apple products have a huge benefit. But it also comes with a set of problems, right? Uh, because that there's no alternative. There's you can you know you're spread thin uh, with uh, with creating everything yourself, and um, of course, usually it costs more for us consumers. So um, Elon tweets about things happening better than his uh, rants or guesses, uh, says uh, Nigel. All right, let's move on. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, once again after my uh, yesterday's. Uh, 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 a live stream. I got a few more Patreons. So thank you so much for joining. For those of you who don't know, um, I'm actually uh, have a Patreon page where you can contribute to the show, get some exclusive content. I just posted a video uh, uh, from my uh, 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 presentation, speech, whatever, from the SV links about electric cars, uh, posting some pictures like, you know, I always say where I go after the Sunday shows, I posted a picture of where I actually go. I thought it was pretty cool. And my girlfriend, um, uh my girlfriend took that one uh how many orders so far for a semi uh nigel i don't know um there's no official number because not all of them are publicly announced i know myself people who own truck companies and put in the orders and they're not public so we don't know but a lot a few hundred for sure right now um uh, so yeah so anyway thank you for those who contribute to the show i'm actually planning a few trips 
literally in the next six weeks, maybe even in China to cover the Beijing Auto Show. So um, thank you for helping me out with that, guys. Uh, all right, uh, another story, uh, just like I said, that Mercedes-Benz, what? Their, their parent company, Daimler, and Biati, the, uh, the uh, electric car companies that nobody really knows about, and uh, nobody knows that they sell more car electric cars and plug-in hybrids in the world than anybody else, more than Tesla, more than Nissan. Uh, so they together had a little baby. Well, it's not their first one, so we're not gonna be as excited, but um, uh, Danza 500, uh, so it's a joint venture. And you know, the reason it's happening and you know, uh, Mercedes just, uh, Daimler just in, invested $1.8 billion in uh, their joint venture in China because don't forget, by the beginning of the next year, China is going to enforce uh, uh, this new uh, uh, green law where if you're producing or uh, importing cars to China, 10% uh, of them has to be electric cars. And so yeah, everyone's you know, kind of uh, trying to get there, trying to get their numbers and electric cars in, in line. And this is what Mercedes-Benz is doing with Biati. It's got a 62 kilowatt hour battery, 300 mile range. We still don't know what system they're using, so don't quote me on that. Uh, and after all the incentives, it should be about uh, 48,000 American dollars, uh, which is relatively affordable. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a technically Mercedes also. So we'll see how it sells. So that's another really good news. It's, um, oh, Shanghai Auto Show would be cool. You know what, Chris? I think that is. Maybe I'm confusing Beijing and Shanghai Auto Shows. I think Shanghai Auto Shows at the end, the one that's at the end of April, I might be going, I never flew that far except for the very first time when I came here from Russia. So I don't know about that, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Also, don't forget I have a full-time job, so I can't always uh, get away for that long. And this is another picture of Denza 500. Uh, all right, a quick a reminder, by the way, uh, that um, Next uh, Saturday, I will be um, interviewing Roger Atkins, uh, uh, electric car blogger and uh, brand consultant. I'm uh, going to have a great conversation. He's going to be streaming all the way from the Great uh, Britain. Um, Great Britain, no, the, the United Kingdom. That's, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, Nigel says, did the Chinese not invest in Mercedes recently? What was it this company? I don't remember them investing in, um, in, in Mercedes. Mercedes kind of invested into the joint uh, venture with Biati, which they already had uh, going on. All right, guys, uh, comment of the day. Let's, uh, let's get uh, going with that. And this one comes from... Uh, Tom Hoffman says, Alex, why do you dislike the i3 so much? Unfortunately, not everybody can afford a Tesla. Okay, so let me explain. Now, I don't dislike the drivers. I dislike the product because I believe that uh, a product like this is sort of not helping the movement at all. I don't believe as... And I think I'm turning out to be right that BMW, at least at that time, was that serious about making an electric car. They were, uh, they just wanted to make a compliance car and not really innovate. Okay, they they don't innovate. They drag their feet, and I don't like it. I, you know, that I give them hard time for that. But also, I don't. This is not a good looking car. Most of the BMW cars have a concept of the car that should look like it's moving fast while it's standing still, which means, as you notice, a lot of BMWs have very long lines uh, all the way throughout their body to kind of uh, show motion. As you can see, this design doesn't have those lines at all. It's almost like they purposely broke this. Now, the funny thing is the guy who designed IA designed this as well. Um, the, also, the colors that put the you know, two-tone uh, colors are just making it looks like a compliance car. And of course, the range is embarrassing. BMW has a lot of money. They could have at least improved on the range on this car, and they haven't done anything since the day this car came out many years ago. So that's why I don't like it. I believe this car was never meant to be part of this movement. This was basically almost a, 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 a slap in the face for this movement saying, yeah, 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 we're just going to produce a few to comply with the law. And you, those of you suckers who, who are going to buy it, you know, great for, for you guys, but we're not even making money on this, so forget it. Um, that's that's why I don't like it. They're not helping, and I'm turn out, turning out to be right. I'm turning, you know, they're not uh, they're not uh, uh, making that much of a progress. They haven't made any any progress. So um, i three was designed by accident, says Jonathan Jane in a, uh, in, a in a chat room. Physics says the i three looks like a, a, a pug dog. Looks like a frog to me, but okay, we can disagree on that one. Uh, and as a designer, I can tell you, those lines are all wrong. The design, the, the body style, the what's inside, it's just all very not designy. It's almost like they put an effort. I always, I always uh, uh, give this example. It's like a father who's 
uh, buying an outfit for prom for his daughter, right? He wants her to be as attractive as possible. So there's no, <laughs> there's no babies coming out of that prom ride, right? Okay, so it, it looks like they, that's the concept that they went with uh, on this one. And I really, really, really don't like it. And by the way, I just did a story how uh, Costco is now offering and Costco and PG&E and Edison Energy here in California offering such big discounts that you can buy this car for like $20,000, which is not a bad deal for those of you who once again want to BMW, a brand new car for pretty much twenty thousand dollars. Well, this is a good deal. I again, don't I? Great, please. If you, if you, if this is the only car that you're able to buy, uh, uh, that I'd rather have you buy this one. That's an electric car than any other BMW, any other gas car. So more power to you. Twenty thousand dollars. That's what you can get it here in California right now. So, um, so that's that. Um, all right, guys. I really, you always plan to show to to go for like uh, uh, you know uh, ten minutes, and we're always over time every time. So just so many news to talk about, right? All right. So uh, we'll meet uh, again tomorrow here at eleven a.m. Of course. Uh, so. Um, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, of course, and join, uh, join this community. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. And remember to stay charged.